Hi, and welcome to the Thai Law Forum. Today I'm going to be speaking with book author Christopher G. Moore, known for his Vincent Calvino series and Thailand-influenced work. Uh, Christopher, thank you for joining us today. Good to be here. Thank you, Nicole. Okay, great. Well, to begin, let's get some background information. You started out teaching law in Canada. When did you decide you wanted to be a full-time writer? I think it started back in the late 70s when I was a law professor at the University of British Columbia. I started writing radio drama for the uh, CBC, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Mm -hmm. and, and about uh, ni early 1980s, I started a novel which became His Lordship's Arsenal, which is really kind of an extension of my experience you know, having lived in, uh, in England. Was there a point in your career and you said, I want to do this full time, I absolutely love this, or was it a gradual process? It was more of a gradual process for at least the, the first few years. Mm -hmm. um, I, my first novel came out in 1985 in New York City, and at that point I left uh, uh, law teaching and started writing full time. A lot of your novels have been labeled as noir. And do you think this genre is something you've always been interested in, or is it something else that initiated this style in your writing? I think the, the idea of, of noir has been around quite a long time, particularly in film, uh, French noir films maybe set the stage. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the, the right kind of genre for the, uh, the crime fiction that seemed to emerge organically out of the experience of living in Southeast Asia, now, particularly having spent time in Vietnam and Cambodia and Burma and Thailand. The, the noir structure and attitude and perspective seemed to uh, capture the kind of realism on the ground that I wanted to convey. And so your law background, has that been a big influence in your writing? Huge influence. Uh, I think legal training is primarily learning to read, understand, uh, and to retell stories, to make mm -hmm. sense of stories. You know, the, this ability to separate fact from opinion and speculation is part of what lawyers learn in law school. They're trained in the case method, and each case is really uh, a story, it's a narration. And uh, the lawyer's job is to try to gather the most compelling evidence to resolve a conflict in favor of his client. So if you look at what lawyers do, it's not that different from a novelist. It's about story, conflict, and resolution. And that's what novel writing is as well. So I think in some ways, uh, legal education may be better preparation for writing novels than a, an MFA degree. A lot of your novels are Thailand influenced, or they're, they're based in Thailand. Why is this a recurring theme in your books? Well, it's a recurring th theme in a number of the books. I mean, one, of, one of the series that I write is about a private detective named Vincent Calvino, who uh, is an ex-lawyer from New York City, uh, operates a small private eye uh, agency in Bangkok. So. He's often involved in cases that rush against uh, the law, uh, where he's looking for people who have gone missing, uh, looking in cases of fraud, looking in cases of murder victims, etc. So crime fits that particular genre, the private eye genre. To give our viewers a little more background information, when did you first come to the kingdom and why? I. I first came in 1983, I was only here for a couple of weeks during that period, and then I returned in the end of 1988 to do research for a book. And I wrote that book, and then another book, and basically 24 years later I'm still here writing books. <laughs> so I mean, Bangkok, uh, during the time when I arrived in the, in the 80s, was you know, undergoing some pretty significant uh, transformations. And that's, I think, the reason I stayed on, in, is to see the huge transition from really a, a, an isolated parochial remote uh, culture, in many ways exotic and mysterious to those in the West, undergo a really large amount of change in a short period of time. 
to where, you know, Bangkok now really is a multi-ethnic commercial center and one of the, the big mega cities. So a chance to be able to chronicle those kinds of cultural, social, and political change over a quarter of a century has been uh, my goal. And so then in your books, how much of it is fiction? How much is actually just stories you've either heard or experienced yourself that you maybe tweaked and changed a little bit to fit into the novel? It's a good question, and it really goes to the heart of what uh, fiction is and mm -hmm. what fiction is not. Uh, fiction is different from uh, journalism, which is going in the streets and writing, he said, she said, descriptive stories, getting all of the facts correct. It's different from photography. You can go on the street with a camera and take lots of photographs. Novel writing brings something quite different to the table. There is realism, but at the same time, the realism should never overcome the imaginative part of the creative writing mind because it's selecting those aspects of the human condition and the human psychology and giving them voice and giving them context that makes a novel an enjoyable stimulating experience. It makes it very different from uh, journalism or other kinds of writing where, which relies solely on the realism of the street. But that said, I do a lot of research for my books and mm -hmm. I think as a writer, it's important to go in places which is not just low-hanging fruit. You've got to go into places which stretch yourself a bit. And I go into uh, slum neighborhoods, I talk to people, I, I go into courthouses, I talk to lawyers, I talk to judges, I go into universities, I talk to students, I go into hospitals. I want a full range of experience of ordinary lives because it's really the telling of ordinary lives in extraordinary circumstances that makes us want to buy a book. Going back to your novels, uh, the title character in the Vincent Calvino Private Eye series, is that based off of you? I, I think this is a common question that writers are often asked, you know, to what extent uh, is a character based on you or a friend or someone you know? Mm -hmm. And it's a normal kind of question. But again, it, it goes back to the, the basic engine behind fiction, which is a creative imagination. If you just write about yourself, even if you've had the most extraordinary line, you're going to run out of material very quickly, mm -hmm. because one line doesn't have enough material for 30 books. That's, that's reality of it. So the, the Vincent Calvino character comes from a number of sources. It comes from things I've researched, people that I know, but ultimately, it, it is a fictive construct. It is from imagination, which draws upon actual people. But I could never point to one per person and say, that is the model for Vincent and Calvino, because that isn't the person that exists. Uh, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. He's not a subject that comes out of journalism or nonfiction writing. He is something that is hopefully a surprising character, changes through the books becomes likable in a way, and reinvents himself from uh, book to book. How has your writing changed from your first book, His Lordship's Arsenal, to the latest, Faking It in Bangkok? I think that's probably fair. It probably has changed. I mean, I've written, uh, this year it will be 24 published novels, mm -hmm. uh, edited and contributed to three anthologies and four nonfiction books. That adds up to 31 books. Mm -hmm. So I would hope that my books have changed over time, that I haven't written the same book 31 times. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have. I mean, the first novel was set in New York, Vancouver, and England, and the later novels have been set in Japan, Thailand, and China, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Burma. The, the nonfiction books, like Baking It in Bangkok, are really about the, the craft of writing, the nature of what it takes to come up with the story. They're about culture, cultural differences, and about language. And I think that culture is a very important part of the crime novels as well. You know, it's not the icing on the cake, it's, it's actually the stuff from which the cake is made. 
the, the essays that I've written in Faking of Bangkok and the Cultural Detective, you know, really draw upon the location of Thailand and culture and the language. And I do a weekly blog, and the essays come from that blog. Every Friday I post a new essay about some aspect of Thai culture, about crime, about language, or about writing. A lot of fictional books about Thailand are crime related. Do you think this is accurate or do you think it's mainly just hyped up? I think, you know, crime has always been uh, a window into a culture and a society and that's certainly mm -hmm. true in Thailand as well. It's, you know, how we define crime, how we arrest, try, and punish wrongdoers tells us a lot about the values of the society. And so it isn't surprising that crime is a popular genre and has become a worldwide interest, particularly uh, in, other, in other cultures and other places, because it introduces us to the drama and our choices and to the notions of social justice and fairness. Mm -hmm. you know, that said, you know, there are many books written about Thailand that have nothing to do with crime. Uh, I suspect the majority of books that are written in English about Thailand are not crime fiction, but are about a whole variety of, of subjects. And I'm, I'm thinking of uh, a book just published by Father Joe Meyer, uh, The Open Gate of Mercy, which is stories set in the slum of Plum Thoi, uh, which is not crime fiction. Okay. General question, what's been the most rewarding part of being a full-time writer? I think the most rewarding part is, like a lawyer, you get to decide which stories that grab your attention and mm. which ones you wait to take on. I look at a, a novel as like taking on a new client. and I, It's a client I have to spend a, a year with, and I want to make certain that there is enough going on that it will uh, be a stimulating and challenging and rewarding experience. Mm. And, of course, at the same time, you get to be your own boss as a novelist and one can underestimate the value of that. Mm -hmm. And have you ever thought about going back to your career in law? I don't think I've ever left the law. Okay. I've taken my legal training in a new direction. Writing novels is really preparing a brief where the public is the judge and the jury as to whether you've made the case you've set out to establish from the evidence. It's the art of persuasion. It's also different from law, which is you know, mainly factual and objective, at least on the surface. The, the novel, at least the kind that I write, the kind I like to read, look more to the subjective interior lives of ordinary people. That's the backbone of fiction. Mm -hmm. It's looking at the contradictions, the inconsistencies that are in every ordinary real life. And not all those contradictions and consistencies can ever come up with one single right answer. Sometimes there's uncertainty that can't be resolved in a novel. Of course, as lawyers, we try to resolve and tie up every single loose end in, in, in the best possible light for our client. You have to resent that a bit when you're writing a novel because often the loose ends are more reflective of what life is in reality than one that is all nicely bundled and wrapped like a gift. What is the best part of living here in Thailand and Bangkok in general and what's the most frustrating thing for you? Okay, um, I think the most frustrating is that uh, no matter how long I continue to ride and live, I'll never do more than scratch the surface of mm -hmm. the culture and of the city of Bangkok. Mm -hmm. It's just so complex and so, so diverse, and there are so many stories to tell that it can be a little frustrating to decide which one to take on next. It's like having a long queue of clients outside the door of a law office, all of which would be interesting clients to take on. You know you only have the resources and energies to take on one at a time, at least when you're a novelist. Mm -hmm. And so what's the best part of living here in Thailand? I think the, the, the best part of living in Thailand is the uh, diversity of people who are here, 
And there are people from all over the world. It really is a multicultural, multi-ethnic uh, part of living. And if you're willing to go out into the countryside and talk with, with ordinary people, you start to learn a lot that you would never learn in the university about yourself, about how lives are shaped, about people's expectations and their desires, and also their anxiety. I mean, I like talking with people. I like listening to people. And I think this is a good listening post. And that's what I see Bangkok as, as my listening post. It's a place where a writer, if he can do so, can forget himself and listen, and listen closely to what others have to say and the diversity of what they're saying and try to find stories that best express those aspirations, and their hopes and their dreams. Mm -hmm. And the expatriates that you have met and seen that have moved to Thailand, do you find that they're more of an adventurous group or is it more of just a mix of people? I think you know, the expat population has changed dramatically in the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. and when I first came here, uh, the people who were living here as expats, you know, they were diplomats, they were journalists, there were a few businessmen. It was a much smaller, tight-knit community. But I think as globalization started to take hold, there were more people who came in in, in, in corporate roles uh, in, private, in the private sector. And that's changed, I think, the expat community in a lot of ways. I think people are now perhaps more mobile than they were before. Mm -hmm. So you see more people coming in uh, to places like Bangkok in order to see if they can start uh, a new and a different life, if Bangkok can accommodate them. I mean, it's not impossible for one rider to keep in contact with the whole expat community. It's just too large. Mm -hmm. There are too many people here now uh, uh, to, to keep track of who's coming and going and why they're here and why they're leaving. So, you know, we Everyone who's here is, will be in contact with a number of people, but it's still living within a fairly restricted part of one community or even several communities. So, you know, I try to make an effort to keep in contact with, with expats that I would normally not meet day to day, but it gets progressively more difficult. You know, they have their separate lives, and Bangkok is a huge city. It's 575 square kilometers, and people are scattered all over the place. There is mm -hmm. not one central meeting place. Very true. Okay, uh, I want to go back to your latest book, Faking It in Bangkok, uh, which is it's a series of essays that discuss some of the more serious uh, issues in Thailand. So why did you decide to write this one? Well, Faking It in Bangkok is a collection of about 50 of my essays. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing an essay every Friday for International uh, uh, Crime Authors Reality Check. It's a blog. And each Friday I post an ess essay of around 1,500 words on some aspect of culture or language or crime or writing. And I collected uh, what I thought were the, the best 50 of those essays to put into a book, put them in order, have them re-edited, I put them in categories and made them more accessible. Mm -hmm. So, in, in a sense, reading the essays is reading a lot of the cultural aspects of what defines me as a writer and propels me to write the kind of fiction that I do. And also, I hope that it, it brings a different perspective and insight for others who are thinking about Thai culture and, and Thailand as a political, social, and economic entity. Okay. Well, last question. What are your future plans and any new books on the way? Uh, we've got three books in the pipeline that will be out before December. Mm -hmm. uh, first will be Nam Pen Nawad. It's a collection of 17 short stories by authors around the world, including uh, Oscar winner of uh, the Killing Fields director, Roland Jaffe, James Grady, whose book was turned into Robert Redford's Three Day of the Condor, John Burdett, and others, written short stories for Nam Pen Noir. That will be launched in Nam Pen on the 30th of November. 
Another anthology is essays written by 12 novelists from around the world, set in places like Gaza, Thailand, Cambodia, Finland, etc. And mm -hmm. dealing really with social justice and fairness issues in the style of George Orwell. So the Orwell Brigade will be out in November. And then lastly, uh, the 13th Calvino novel, Missing in Rangoon, mm -hmm. which is not why I researched this last January in Rangoon, will be coming out around the 1st of December. So three books in the Bible. Wonderful. So you'll be busy. Or you've and been then, busy. <laughs> uh, next, in the, next January, I am for the first time in a quarter of a century going back to the classroom to teach a long course at the Trope University in Melbourne, Australia, uh, a five-day intensive Masters of Law course. Wonderful. So is this going to be a permanent fixture or just... I'll be bringing time? in my nonfiction and cross-cultural experiences okay. uh, and hopefully bringing a quite different perspective to the law than I would have brought as a law professor when I was at the University of British Columbia. Mm, I can imagine. So I'm sure you're looking forward to that then. I'm very much looking forward to it. Great. Okay, well, like I said, those are all the questions I have for you today. And again, thank you so much for joining us to talk with us about your books and what's going on and everything. I appreciate it, Nicole. Thank